So good morning to all the participants, those who are eagerly attend the online STTP program on assessment in engineering education, a pedagogical approach. So the objective of the online STTP is the major thing is assessment. So assessment is considered as the most important role in steering the learning process. However, we can't confined in one particular methodology as the best assessment method for a course. An assessment plan helps in selecting the right testing method and decides on the relative weight of each assessment for the final result of a course. This also helps to ensure that the assessment addresses the intended learning outcomes, which makes an assessment plan a helpful tool for examiners and an important instrument for quality assurance. An assessment matrix is designed to ensure that all the selected learning objectives are covered in the assessment, which helps to make certain that the assessment will be both valid and reliable. This is done by using different methods to set the cutoff score by using rubrics. The participants will be put forward to apply quality criteria for the construction of assessments and assessment items to improve the quality of assessments and education, which have huge impact on the future education and careers of students. So the guidelines of STTP, the participants are requested to attend all the sessions using Zoom app. You have to log in Zoom app using the register mail, email ID. You, have, you can change your profile name with participant ID which was mailed by us in Excel file. Participants are requested to mute your microphone and camera during the session. You, are, you all are needed to join in our WhatsApp group to get the recent notifications. As per AACT norms, 80% attendance and minimum 60% score to be secured in all the assessment is mandatory to avail certificate. Feedback and attendance in Google Forms will be posted at the end of every session. And then question and answer session is conducted through chat box only. Assessment in Google Forms will be on MCQ type, short answer type, etc. Submit the assessment through Google Forms only and which will be posted in WhatsApp group at the end of the day. Assessment forms must be submitted before next day, 9.30 a.m. After that, the link automatically disabled. All the participants are requested to download apps which are instructed by the experts during the session as a part of activity in HTTP. If you have any query, please raise your hand. Our session coordinator will assist you. Participants are requested to type all your questions in chat box, which will be answered by the expert at the end of session. Participants are requested not to post any verbal crutches like good morning, good afternoon, and okay like this in chat box. All the recorded virtual sessions will be available in our YouTube channel at the end of respective slots. If any queries regarding technical issue, inform through WhatsApp. And this session will be handled by Dr. T. Lakshmanan, SRM Institute of Science and Technology, School of Mechanical Engineering. He studied undergraduation in Mechanical Engineering at the University of Madras in the year of 1994. He completed his post-graduation in Energy Engineering, CEG, Anna University, Chennai, in the year of 2000. He did postgraduate diploma in Financial Management at New Delhi, Indira Gandhi National Open University in the year of 2003. He pursued doctorate in Internal Composition Engineering, CEG Anna University, Chennai, in the year of 2011. He had, a, he had one year experience in a uh, <coughs> Vasavi Engineering Works, Hyderabad, at the year of 1994 to 95. After that, he joined to in teaching field and worked as a lecturer and assistant professor and additionally overall in charge for Dr. NGR Educational Group in 
2009 and nearly 14 years after that he had joined king's engineering college and worked as a professor and head of the department and principal in charge during the year of 2009 to 2011 after that he joined rmk engineering college and worked as a professor at department of mechanical engineering for 2.6 years and two years he worked as a faculty in engineering department mechanical section of shinas college of technology woman and one year he worked as a head of the department at kpr institute of engineering of technology Coimbatore, at the year of 2009 to 2011 currently he is working as a professor in srm institute of science and technology school of mechanical engineering katangulathur chennai he is expertise in nba work for tier 1 and tier 2 institutions he is a first person to try acetylene in ca engine by aspiration techniques with all safety precautions he is expertise in timed gaseous fuel injection techniques in ca engines he is a energy con conservation specialist he is a reviewer in lcvrs any sorry any energy conversion and management journal so totally 22 years of teaching experience and one year power plant maintenance experience he has in the case of research under his guidance four doctorates defended their thesis two students awaiting for synopsis at present he is guiding five students in the case in the research side and also 10 more research projects are in process he has published more than 21 research papers in international and national research journals and attended more than 15 international and national conferences as well as workshops his journals are citation by 356 Hutch index 8 item index 7 his ongoing research projects are product development for rice steiner zero waste toilet solid waste management and plastic waste management, micro gasifier, biomass, wood stove, optimization of solar power generation by integrating PV by T panels, solar PV cell performance improvement, optimization of peltier, cooler shapes and integrating with solar panels, peltier coolers for heating and cooling purpose, Design and fabrication of micro upper drop gasifier for rural applications, cost optimization and production methods improvement of biodiesel production plant, development of evaporative refrigerator come cooler come chiller for rural people using solar energy. <clears throat> His major funded projects are around two lakhs. So one project is in solar aided portable refrigeration and another one is a low cost biodiesel plant which are funded by national science and technology entrepreneurship development board department of science and technology government of india he had a patent on acetylene gas induction device and traditionally shaped peltier cooler at the date of 30 12 2016. he has a membership Life in Indian Society for Technical Education at the year of 2004 and life member in the Compassion Institute under USA Indian section at the year of 2011. He is an approved reviewer in the Research Council of Women for research projects in the year of 2016. And he had a member of the Institution of Engineers what, from Kolkata, India at the year of 2017. The awards he received are, he received Research Excellence Award by IEA India for conducting research in acetylene as an alternate fuel in the year of 2017 and also outstanding contribution in reviewing by energy conversion and management LCVR in the year of 2018. On behalf of Elamon Institute of Technology, Mechanical Engineering, I welcome our valuable speaker for this session. Now I request to uh, hand over the session to speaker. 
I think he has given a long introduction about me instead of briefing it. So I am also basically a mechanical professor, actually mechanical teaching only. And uh, these topics which I am going to take is related to more or less related to psychology only, actually. So uh, I got interest in this mainly when I was attending a workshop like you people you are attending now today. So around ten years back I attended one workshop, ten days workshop in IIT Kanpur uh, by conducted by psychology department. At that time only I realized that uh, we are not having any basic psychology knowledge how to teach for the children students. That is the thing because if you take an arts college faculty they learn B. Ed. But uh, as an engineering faculty what we do we complete B M A or P H C and we directly come for teaching. We don't know how to teach. We take some topic prepare some notes right. Prepare some PPT or note, write on the board and solve some problems come out of the class and we set some question what we have prepared for the class and we evaluate it. That is what we are doing it. But actually speaking, uh, there is a lot of uh, innovations are there in teaching methodology and that we are lacking in the year actually as engineering faculty and and be because of those uh, attending that workshop, I got interest in this process. What is psychology? What is teaching methodology? How to uh, make the student interesting in our class because. When when the class is very noisy and when you are taking class, it, when you see any official passing by, it shows that the students are not interested in your class. So when you are taking class and automatically when the students are silently listening to your class, means that shows the class is very interesting. So you have to handle the class in such a way that it is made interesting for the students. So automatically, what happens is the psychology comes into picture over there. So you have to make it divert the create the interest in the students to attend this lecture. What you are going to give so. One basic psychology, what they are telling us, every day if you tell some new concept, students will start to listening to you. If you are telling the same thing already, what will happen is they will not be listening to you at all. So, in different angle, you have to think as a teacher, as an efficient teacher, we need to deliver the content to the students in what way we have to do it. That was, as a thing, is very important for us. So, of course, I, so if you are the topic which I am going to handle will be related to something related to psychology only, but uh, it will be very interesting. Of course, if you uh, have that interest for learning, automatically you will listen it. Some people, if you are, if it is boring, means it will be very deep. So you have interest towards it, towards the teaching, and see, listen to the class. Then we'll proceed now, right? So my topic is based on assessment process, and recently we also attended on a ten days workshop conducted by AACT. So the AACT examination reforms. So AACT has uh, framed a question paper setting and model, and they are teaching, they are uh, conducting workshops so that. Uh, the new pattern of question paper will be used in all the institutes throughout the India. So gradually they are giving workshops. Us. So that's what I thought. I'll share my knowledge with you, which I have attended. And since uh, three, four colleges, I have uh, conducted the MBA process, and uh, we have attended more number of workshops. Us, and I'm certified MBA auditor also. So I thought I'll share some related to MBA also. So something related to Bloom's taxonomy, based on Bloom's taxonomy, question paper settings. And finally, the model question paper, how it will be in future, what AAC is expecting. That is what I'm going to handle. So, so generally, education plays a major role, right? The it's a Bloom's quote. Bloom Bloom's is a educational professor. He's a doctorate there. So that's why we are we are going to follow the is we based on his research only. We are going to uh, throughout the world we are following his uh, taxonomy. Actually, how to teach for the children, how to deliver the content, how to assess them. So everything he has guided in his research. So that has become a Bible for all the educational teachers. If you are going to be a teacher, means Bloom's is a communication language for the teachers. That is what we say. For an engineer, engineering graphics is a communication. It's a language of communication like that. For teachers throughout the world, Bloom's taxonomy is a, a communication language. That is what they are trying to say. So the purpose of education is to change the thoughts, feelings, and actions of the students. So this is what uh, main important thing is. So we deliver the content to the students actually, but what happened is it has to go into their brain, get stored, and what happened? They have to apply it to the current situation, and they should have that inner feeling, the, the content which you are delivering. It has to affect them psychologically. Voluntarily, they have to do certain action. Example, if we say energy conservation point of view means how much of energy is wasted, what is the pollution is causing, what are the hill effect the society is facing, everything if you tell them. Automatically, when next time when you see observe the students in the back side of the class or after the class, when the fan is running, he has to switch it off. It shows that the content you are delivered has touched his feelings. That is what your the reaction has to be, your outcome of the teaching. 
So now we teach them, we evaluate it, we say that our students got 80 marks, 100 marks. That is not the purpose now. The purpose of education is to change the thoughts, feelings, and action of the student. Similarly, if you are a student now, you have to tell me at the end of the class whether your thoughts and feelings have been changed or not. Otherwise, my purpose of lecturing will be waste totally. So every class, if we go to the class, if you are delivering a content, see that it touches the feelings of the student. To that extent, we have to handle the classes. Otherwise, it's totally waste because the content is there. If you go to the Google and search whatever the content you want, it is available. But as a teacher, we have to deliver the content in such a way that it touches the effect of the student's feeling. That is what is required. So throughout the lifelong, you'll be using your knowledge for, for this action or the whatever the content you have delivered. That is what is the, the college environment learning happens over there. So in, the, in this presentation, initially I'm going to talk about what are the different types of knowledge we are going to, we are delivering to the students. And uh, since the question papers, AICT is insisting on us to go for a setting based on Bloom's taxonomy. So uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the Bloom's taxonomy. So I'll give introduction about what is the Bloom's taxonomy, what are the examples of questions under different heading. And then uh, AICT insists on to evaluate the CO, course outcome. That is unit wise COs are there. And similarly, POs are there. This is also related to NBA. They want us to set the question paper assessing the Bloom's taxonomy level, CO of the subject, as well as PO, PO attainments. So these three areas only the final question paper will be set there, and that is a model question paper. In future, all the institute will be following it. So in order to give you some knowledge, Bloom's taxonomy, I'll give some knowledge about that. And uh, you, I don't know whether some of you may be familiar, some of you may not be familiar. So I'll talk about the, what are the 12 POs and what how it is calculated, how is achieve, achievement is calculated. And uh, some model question papers based on Bloom's text on me, some model question papers are there. And uh, I can explain you the model, because I'll explain the model question papers, how it is framed. And finally, COPO attainment includes in the question paper. And competency and performance indicator. This is what the new new trend or new technique uh, ASAT is guiding us to do it in the question paper in linking CO and PO. And the last slightly I'll touch about the higher order thinking levels or assessment methods. As uh, in the introduction also, it, the, uh, the convener was saying about the assessment methods and rubrics. Some slight, slightly I'll give introduction about what is the rubrics and how the higher order thinking skills are assessed. So this is the overall content of my presentation. I have some in between, in order to avoid the boredom, I have two video presentations also. So I'll, I will show you the two videos also. That is also same led to the content. Just to avoid boredom, some video also will be interesting for you to see it also, right? So this is how we are going to proceed now. So the first thing is we are delivering the instruction we are delivering to the students and students are learning and after learning we do the assessment process. This is what generally it happens in the in the general engineering classroom. So if you take learning questions, what is important for students to learn in the limited classroom type. So that is what we prepare lesson plan everything and all but generally as engineering faculty or uh, technical faculty what we do, we do some content based of the previous year uh, lesson plan and we do it out. But if you analyze unit wise, in a particular on our time or 15 minutes time, what is that we are going to deliver? That uh, learning question, what is that students will learn? That we have to plan it and go and deliver. That is what we prepare, lesson plan actually. So lesson plan is the simple learning question. What students will learn in that one hour, one hour of time or 15 minutes of time. And next, the content is ready now. You have to, instruction question is that how does one plan and deliver the instruction? So you have, suppose example, energy conservation or uh, waste, waste recycling, reuse and refuse, such, such a topic you are going to handle means in what way you are going to deliver it, whether it's a presentation point or whether it's a case study point or whether some uh, activity based or so like that you have to plan and deliver the instruction, how you are going to deliver instruction is going to happen place in the classroom in what way it will be very effective. So that will listen high level of learning among the large number of students, simply even chalk and talk or a PPT presentation will not help in all the topics. So if you want to touch them sensitively, if you want to control the environment pollution, energy conservation point of view, you can show an introduction video, how the environmental pollution is getting spoiled, use of plastic waste, which is not able to uh, degrade it enough. A lot of plastic waste are getting dumped. If you show that video, automatically what will happen? Psychologically, they'll have a feeling how much of impact is creating on the environment. So then you can go into the topic. So that way you have to plan your content delivery, how you are going to deliver the content, in what way it will touch the so everything has to touch a student's feeling. That angle we have to see it out. Then 
after the after delivering what happened is students would have learned it then how does one design assessment process for getting how will the students are learned so we need to assess a student otherwise what will happen is there is no use at all as the convener was saying at the end of the session there will be a mcqs will be there right some questions you have to answer everything all that means that how far you have attended the class how far you are able to understand it so if you are able to answer all my questions i am very happy that i have delivered the content happily right if nobody is answering the question automatically shows my content delivery or my methodology is something wrong so as a teacher what happens is the assessment methods assessment marks will tell you with the feedback or there is it has not reached so what happens is i have to change the delivery content delivery methods so that is what assessment plays a major role so who is who is and you can classify the students also who is hard working students who is a poor student who is average student and based on that you can evaluate them and then alignment question is what happens is you have to ensure objectives instruction and assessments are consistent to one another so whatever you are delivering whatever the instructions given and the assessment everything should be consistent without without i have if, if without teaching anything else and you are going beyond the knowledge of students the expectation is higher the evaluation process will not be complete so that is what is important is so this overall view of the general teaching classroom we handle is just an introduction lesson plan we do it and we deliver it we plan how it can be delivered and there are different new methodologies there for delivering the content so uh, chalk and talk principle is is outdated now almost they are not uh, bother about it now, now people are asking for what is the innovation teaching methodology you are going to handle so there are uh, so much of techniques are there try to attend some additional if you have learned it gain some knowledge in that how differently you can deliver the content to students we have repeatedly be asking questions also you can make the students learn that is questioning technique one way of uh, making the students learn and you can pair them and ask them to learn a topic you can give them a topic ask them to discuss two three people can discuss and they can come and discuss also that way also learning can take place think pair share technique that technique is called as think pair share and technique you can give some case study problem ask them to analyze it and do so there are different methodologies are available nowadays because now the generations are very fast compared to the olden days and also we have to be abreast keep abreast with the technology and deliver different methodologies that is what is expected from the engineering faculties so if you go to the educational teaching and learning outcomes so example we are going to teach a concept of reduce reuse recycle approach to conservation of waste management so how you are going to deliver the content that is what is important is so the educational objective is reduce recycle approach and consideration point of view we have to teach the students now so if first of all the knowledge what is the knowledge we are having and how we are going to deliver it that is what is one one the left hand part is a known part where the knowledge dimension is there there are uh, around four types of knowledge we are classifying it so we teach different 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 topics in engineering classroom we teach concepts we teach principles laws rules problems right laboratory method we don't know why we are doing all those things because the time table is set syllabus curriculum is based on that we run after that but if you go deep into that there are a lot of things to be learned if you know how the content is knowledge is classified you can see that we have four different knowledge there conceptual factual knowledge conceptual knowledge procedural knowledge and meta cognitive knowledge so the information what you are giving is nothing but it's it's informative only but if it is processed and stored in the brain of the students what will happen it becomes a knowledge it will be used throughout his lifetime so whatever the the information i am giving is nothing but bloom section with information I'm going to give so when you process and store in your brain it will become as a knowledge so lifelong what will happen is you will be applying in your teaching methodology and uh, it will be useful for you that is what the knowledge we say it is so the, we first of all we should know what type of knowledge we are giving to the students whether it is a factual knowledge conceptual knowledge procedural knowledge or meta cognitive knowledge so so the teaching methodology depends upon the subject it changes if you take thermodynamics the concept we have to give the uh, factual knowledge and conceptual knowledge then we have to go for procedural knowledge so if it is a theory subject means directly we will go to the procedural knowledge there will be no concept at all is there so like that the knowledge is classified and if you coming to the verb we have we have to apply it so when it comes to apply point of view the blooms is applied over there cognitive process dimension bloom taxonomy comes into picture over there so blooms what happen is he wants the teaching learning process or the learning by the students happen in this in this domain teaching learning domain he is classifying it at three areas one is a cognitive aspect we are giving the knowledge to students and it has to 
affect him psychologically it has reaches brain it has to touch his mind so it is affective aspect feeling aspect and once he has a feeling automatically psychomotor domain physical activity will happen so example energy conservation pollution means you are delivering the content to the student we are telling the impact of the to the society automatically what will happen is the knowledge is given to him and it is stored in his brain and it is processed and what happen is he will be having a some affinity towards saving the energy or protecting this environment so afterwards what happen is whenever he see some fans or anything else without person it is running or physical activity what happen is he will go automatically and switch it off without telling anybody else nobody will insect whenever you go to, whenever uh, we go to any class we take once you leave in the class switch off the fans and light a faculty will be giving insertion but that insertion is not required so psychomotor domain is muscular activity will come into picture and he'll go and switch off the fan because he has touched we have touched his feelings and psychologically to preserve this environment so if you take class of 60 students at least four or five students you can touch him psychologically and see that the your content delivered is successful enough so that is what blooms is classifying the the learning domain process three different domain process is classifying it cognitive aspect affective aspect and psychomotor aspect so in one a cognitive process what happen is students are given create remember understand apply analysis evaluate and create so this is what uh, in the presentation we are going to see what what is this types of knowledge it is and what is this uh, remember create everything blooms is saying he is uh, he is a doctorate actually in uh, education psychology and uh, based on his research only he has written two textbooks are there which is followed as a bible for all the teachers in throughout the world now so i will give basic idea about what is this create evaluate and all and based on this blooms how the assessment has been done assessment can be done question papers have been set that is what is plan so we go directly to the question paper assessment without an understanding of blooms nothing is possible it's not it will not be clear copo all the basic knowledge i had to give you then we'll go for the how the question paper is set based on the blooms exam we level so now i'll go to the knowledge so the two different introduction part this these two are introduction part actually you should know what are the different types of knowledge dimensions available and uh, what is uh, blooms blooms acts on me and what are the content the cognitive process dimension is is saying so let me go to the next slide so first we will see the what are different types of knowledge is available so as i said the four different knowledge is are there they are classified this it's a psychological fact it's education psychology so we have to touch in that so once we are very strong in that only we can go into the content delivery and learning process how students are learning and how we can incorporate this uh, tech knowledge process in his brain so first knowledge is factual knowledge the basic elements students must know to be acquainted with the discipline or solve problems in it so it's a factual knowledge mean it's a fact so knowledge of terminology is what is force what is newton what is uh, unit for newton what is velocity right so these are basic terminologies everybody should be familiar with it so he was telling that is what the basic terminology technical vocabulary musical symbols what are the symbols we use degree centigrade or fahrenheit so these are the some basic things as an uh, as an engineering student they, they have to know similarly knowledge of specific details and elements major natural resources reliable sources of information so these are uh, school days uh, we had studied about it the basic science right uh, periodic tables right uh, what are the elements natural elements available what is a metal non metal some basic factual knowledge with which these are given in the school days so that is what uh, uh, this factual knowledge will be given for the students in the school days itself so that is what we call it as factual knowledge it is a fact so that's what the the word itself gives you the meaning that it is a fact coming to conceptual knowledge uh, i said there are total four uh, knowledge other factual knowledge conceptual knowledge procedural knowledge and metacognitive knowledge four different knowledge is there in that factual is nothing but based on the facts which everybody should be familiar with the terms and notation terminology vocabulary used in the subject coming to conceptual knowledge it is a interrelations among the basic elements within a larger structure that enable them to function together so these are the content i directly taken from bloom's taxonomy textbook actually so it will be more of the words will be of more technical content so it is a basic source i taken from this so that is uh, the the words will be of a very high level skill level so inter interrelationship among the basic elements within a larger structure that enable them to function together 
So that is what the Bloom's is giving the definition of conceptual knowledge. So knowledge of classifications and categories. So knowledge is how it can be classified, how it can be categorized. Example, periods of geological time, forms of business ownership. So here it comes on the classification point of view, how different knowledge is there, how it can be classified, how it can be grouped. Knowledge of principles and generalization, Pythagoras theorem, right? Law of supply, theorem, economic side, first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics. So these are all uh, thing it will come here. So only if you group the knowledge, only we can classify it out. What is the different subjects? Example, if you take mechanical, we have manufacturing, we have design. <coughs> there are tremendous amount of knowledges are available in mechanical side. So first we have to classify it and categorize it. Then we have to go for studying the principle and generalization. And then knowledge of theories, models and success will be studying the subject. So what are theory of evolution? What is the theory of learning process? There are different learning processes are there. There are teaching learning models. So different models are available by done by the different researchers. So that we will be studying in this. this is what we call it as a conceptual knowledge. First, we have to categorize it, classify it. And then we'll be studying the principles and laws. And what are the theories and models available? So in teaching model itself, there are different models available. You can adopt any, any, uh, any model, whichever is suitable for you. So it's a proven technique, actually. So this is related to conceptual knowledge. So the word itself tells that. It is related to concept. So factual knowledge is fact, conceptual knowledge is related to concepts. So even though we deliver these knowledges in the classroom, we don't know that indirectly it is a factual knowledge we are delivered. We are delivered a conceptual knowledge. If it is going to be a lab, it is going to be a procedural knowledge. So like that, uh, uh, without knowing what it is, we are delivering the knowledge to the students. Now. So coming to the third part, procedural knowledge, it is nothing but how to do something, methods of inquiry, criteria for using skills, algorithm, techniques and methods. So in this knowledge of subjects, specific skills and algorithm, the knowledge of the specific techniques and methods, knowledge of criteria for determining when to use appropriate process. So this is related to uh, engineering graphic, dra dra engineering dra drafting lab. If you take a student engineering drawing lab, we'll tell them the procedure, how to do it, you, how to use the drafters, how to use the instruments and all. Similarly, if they, you take them to the lab, laboratory class also, you insect them how to operate the uh, facilities available there, how to verify the laws and regulations and all. So skills used in painting with watercolors, drawing, engineering graphics, scientific methods, algorithms. If, if you take a computer science staff, means they, they'll be talking about algorithms. Criteria used to determine when to apply a procedure involving Newton's second law. Criteria used to judge which crit the criteria, what, what condition will be applying second law of thermodynamics, third law of we know the laws in conceptual knowledge, we are delivered the law, but it comes to application point of view at what criteria you have to apply it. So that is also taken care by the procedural knowledge. Feasibly are using particular method to estimate the business cost. So even though different knowledges we are given, this is uh, procedural knowledge is application point of view. So under what condition we are going to apply it, that is what the, this type of knowledge is given to the students, the procedural knowledge. And the last one is your metacognitive knowledge. So. Cognitive means it is related to mind. So mind or knowledge are, so cognitive refers to the mental action or process, acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought and experience and senses. So it is related to mind, mind, the knowledge which is stored and automatically the, which touches the feelings or attitude of the person. So that is what cognition is related to mind. The knowledge of cognition, general as well as awareness and knowledge of one's own cognition. So we should know our own knowledge. It's a self-knowledge actually. Metacognition is nothing but, it's a meta cognitive process, nothing but storing of knowledge in the brain. Whatever we learn, whatever you are learning now, it has to be processed and stored in the brain. And automatically the brain will give instruction to the mind and uh, you do the process actually. The physical activity will be done. So that is what accurate knowledge, understanding it and uh, storing it. And you think over it. Now you'll be thinking about it. So all those things will happen in the metacognitive knowledge. Self-knowledge is actually. So for the students, we give uh, factual knowledge. Then we give, teach them about the concepts and laws, regulations. And then we teach them about the procedure knowledge under what criteria it will be applied. And finally, based on all the three knowledges, they will be applying in the day-to-day -day activities. Example, if I'm giving a Bloom's taxonomy methodology for setting a question paper, I'm, I'll be teaching about what is a Bloom's. It is a basic uh, conceptual knowledge because it's not a factual knowledge, conceptual knowledge will give me. And showing the model question paper, I'll teach you procedural knowledge. Once you go back to your colleges and you start applying it, it is a knowledge stored in the process in your brain. And uh, if your interest is touched upon, you will start implementing it. 
so you will try it you have experience you have a sense so why not we try this assessment process so the students will learn we can assess them so that uh, type of attitude is nothing but your own self knowledge what you gain the end of the class so students will go and apply to their regular industry environment so this is what we call as meta coding knowledge is a strategic knowledge here the knowledge of outlining as a means of capturing the structure of specific subject in a textbook knowledge of use of heuristics so these are all something related to the self knowledge knowledge that critiquing critic critiquing essays in a personal strength whereas writing essays in a personal weakness awareness of one's own knowledge level so this overall it talks about one's own knowledge only according to me the knowledge towards psychology education psychology is very limited i know but out of interest whatever i learned i want to share it with you as an engineering faculty if a directly a psychology faculty comes and take class what will happen is he may not be knowing your problem what is your level of knowledge and all they directly go to the theory part at model land and it will be no it will not be touching your uh, senses of course it will be totally out of their area and uh, totally they will be handling in a psychological way i am handling in such a way that uh, as an engineering faculty what is that knowledge we have what is that uh, self knowledge we have towards education psychology and then we'll go on. if a psychological professor or psychology professor comes means what will happen is they go directly into this content they go directly to the delivery point of view you may not be having any basic knowledge so automatically there will be a gap in the communication part so self knowledge is very very important so generally a famous saying uh, uh, a saying also says that if you want to avoid uh, disturbance in your personal lives what they are telling is start observing your own own self it is a general psychology general philosophy actually of life if you want to avoid any problems in your future life just start observing yourself own observe own self so that is what they are trying to say you just close your eyes start observing your breath for 2 minutes what will happen is automatically if you start observing your breath for 2 minutes and uh, automatically your thoughts will be under control and once you close your eyes and observe your breath automatically your thought process will be under control and you will know what you are thinking because uh, that is what they are trying to do they are asking us to practice 5 minutes or 10 minutes slow breathing technique as well as a meditation point so once you start observing yourself automatically you will know what is the status now so just if, if you want you can try it for one minute you just close your eyes and observe and you can understand what is the status now so you are listening in the class now your mind will be wandering here and there with lot of different different option because your environment is there you are you are in a house i don't know whether in a college environment a lot of disturbance will be there your mind will be getting disturbed out but if you close your eyes and observe your breath for one minute automatically your mind will be coming into control and you will know what the thought what thought you are thinking and automatically once you once you start thinking about your own knowledge own self you will have a self control over you over yourself anger or fear or anything else automatically will be under control and once your thought process control you know what you are going to speak also so to avoid the all future problems physical relation problems everything else start observing yourself start observing your breath and the the thinking what you are thinking so once you do this automatically your relationship will be very fine whether it is between the children or whether it is between the family or with your wife or with the environment with your parents once you start observing yourself automatically all the problems are solved this is a saying by a uh, experience uh, saint i suppose i don't remember who has said it but i remember that uh, the word to avoid what is a, a major thing to avoid future problems physical relation problems this is the only thing he has said try to observe your breath and your thoughts so that is what we call it as a self knowledge so only if you have self knowledge only we know where we are oh ho oh. so if you, if you see uh, the self knowledge is very limited i am saying that i am i am very having a limited knowledge in education psychology means so what will happen is i will start learning more more subjects more content related to that to educate myself if i think that i know everything automatically the intensity of learning will get decrease so you have to educate the students such a way that what is the knowledge they are having this is your knowledge you have to know more about this you have to create interest in them so the total four knowledge what we have seen is conceptual factual knowledge conceptual knowledge procedural knowledge and meta cognitive knowledge so these are the four different types of knowledge we are giving to the students and in based on this only we are delivering the content to students this is a knowledge process so these are the some of the examples of uh, uh, factual knowledge is scientific terms vocabulary painting standard symbols these are all taught in the school days and conceptual knowledge is nothing but the research has shown that many students do not take make connection between and among the facts they learn in the classroom so they study and when it comes to application point 
they may not be interrelating it so the developing expertise in an academic requires disciplined way of thinking so what we have to do is we have to make them to think where it will be applied in the external world real world applications so when you are delivering the knowledge so students do not apply the facts and ideas to the real world situations and the knowledge which we are giving in the classroom leads to inert knowledge once it comes to practical situation they are not able to apply the knowledge which they have learned in the classroom at all so as a teaching faculty we have to relate them where it is used where it is applied in the real world situation so that is what is required then only they will know where it will be applied otherwise whatever the knowledge we are given in the classroom is totally become an inert knowledge they call it inert knowledge so the conception knowledge and deep learning can help the students apply the knowledge in real world situation thereby overcoming inert knowledge so they have to taught in they have to think over it where it will be applied real world situation has to be connected to the knowledge which they are giving that is the conceptual knowledge the conceptual knowledge we are giving has to be related to the real world situation where it will be applied so automatically that's inner knowledge will will be overcome inner knowledge will become an active knowledge which will be applied so that is what the conceptual knowledge is the conceptual knowledge is stated somewhat differently retention focus on the past whereas transfer emphasizes the future retention what the, the the process of retention focus on the past whereas transfer emphasizes the future so once you have a, in, in the knowledge is memorized it will be in the past but once you start applying it it will be in the future also it will be applied after the students reads a textbook learns ohms law for example a retention test might ask them to write the formula for ohms law so that is what we as a teacher ask them write the formula for ohms law write the straight law ohms law this is what we ask them so it will be there in the memory only but in contrast what they are asking is so we have to test the task by rearranging an electrical circuit to maximize the rate of electron flow to maximize the current flow by using ohms law means so he will be applying the ohms law and see that the maximum current for that what is the resistance to be added what is the voltage to be applied so like that he will be using ohms law and finding out the real world situation problem this in this way only the question has to be asked for the engineering student so the conceptual knowledge gained is through constructive learning process that is what they are trying to say this this also again a psychological term Con the concept of knowledge we are giving so far is nothing but we are teaching the ohms law we are asking him to write it in the test with that we stop or we give some problem and with that we we stop we are not relating to the real world application so in instead of that we give them the real world application so ask them to maximize the electron flow or current flow in a circuit for the for the given resistance or for the given voltage what if the resistance required means different current flow means they will be calculating it they will be applying ohms law and coming out with different solutions so that is what this option is the conceptual knowledge gained through constructive or apply application oriented learning process that is what is called as constructive learning so here it is knowledge the knowledge is gained by learning process so for that they are using different terms the psychologists people are using uh, different technical terms conceptual knowledge knowledge gained and learning process constructive way they we are teaching it and uh, few this is again the models theories represents knowledge categories uh, how these parts function together this and all conceptual knowledge we give to the students how different parts are uh, information are interconnected interrelated in a more systematic manner uh, force acceleration velocity temperature entropy stress strain kirchhoff law law of thermodynamics so uh, these are the terminologies we teach them the concepts we teach them different laws newton's law we teach them and uh, we have to when teaching we have to interrelate each other how force is related to acceleration how acceleration is related to velocity so there is some interrelation there it will be easy for the students to understand what is the relation between temperature and heat if you ask any of the students any other faculty they will be struggling so like that we have to interrelate and teach them so that the knowledge what we are giving will be useful for the students so next is a procedure knowledge related to the uh, algorithms and laboratory knowledge we are giving to them and uh, i think time is getting late and coming to the meta cognitive knowledge is self knowledge right so always self knowledge is very very important so we have to thinking about one's own thinking what is your level of thinking is there what you are doing so always start thinking your thoughts once you start thinking your thoughts automatically your thoughts will be getting controlled and uh, you you have concentration will improve and uh, our ego everything will go off we will have will create the interest for learning process that is what is self knowledge or meta cognitive knowledge i am thinking i am seeing i'm wondering i'm noticing i'm feeling so so you also understand now whether i don't know whether uh, you are attending my class or you are thinking about some other activities related to your surrounding environment so it depends upon your own self only similarly for the students also when they are attending the class 
you have to give them the knowledge what is their capability what is their level of knowledge then only they know what is their level so first you have to touch their uh, knowledge of level what they are having it so automatically what will happen they will they will they will have an interest to learn automatically so how well how long the students study how much and deeply students learn and they, this ability to assess their own skill knowledge and learning so once students are able to know their own knowledge only what will happen is they will have the interest oh, yes i am i am not uh, i am having this much of knowledge only i should learn so that interest you have to create among the students that is what uh, this meta cognitive knowledge will be, will be useful and uh, this is about the self knowledge again and uh, to categorize is awareness of what you know and what you don't know that is what is very very important is because some students some of the students are faculty they know sir i know everything whatever you ask them they say i know everything that that type of attitude they will be having it if father is saying something he will say that no no i know everything or not that that type of attitude is wrong so we need he has to evaluate our own strength and weakness everybody is having their own strength and own weakness if the weakness is there we need to rectify it out so that is what is better cognitive knowledge plays a role so this is what interview interview process and all they analyze the students what is the strength and what is the weakness and how whether it can, they will be useful for a particular job or not so what is their knowledge they are having so that is what they tested reflecting adjusting one's own approach beliefs about intelligence learning applying strategy and monitoring performance so they'll test for the attitude so the the interview people will be testing the students meta cognitive knowledge to what level they, they are aware of it what knowledge they are having it if the if they understand that something they don't know means that shows that students will be able to learn it in future also if the student is saying that everything he knows means automatically his learning interest will get decreased so that's that's how the meta cognitive knowledge plays a major role even for teachers and faculty also you analyze your strength and weakness which area are very strong which future what is the knowledge is required from teachers community so towards that you start preparing yourself and always with a full satisfied mind that you know that i know everything i know everything means automatically you will not have the interest to learn and since you having interest only you are attending this workshop so i suppose you are learning lagging began in this particular area so you are come for attending the workshop of course certainly you will learn it and you since your meta cognitive is very high your meta cognitive knowledge is very high all the people who are attending shows that you have understood that you are lagging in this area you want to enrich yourself that is what the meta cognitive is what you are doing is so this is a major area which will helps the students so you can analyze the students the meta cognitive level of the students you if you make them to understand what is the knowledge they are having it uh, high performing students are better cognitive skills so i can say the people who are attending the workshop is having a higher performing skills is there with you that is why you are able to analyze your analyze the area which you are not very poor in that area and you are going to you are attending the workshop to gain the knowledge in that so we can students typically have poor meta cognition besides other things poor meta cognition is a big part of incompetence so that poor meta cognition means they say that already he knows everything so shorten the study time thinking that they have mastered the course material that they barely know they will not study much if you take a poor student they will not put more effort in uh, assessing uh, preparing for the test and all because they know already you would have listened in the class he thinks that he knows everything and underestimate or overestimate the performance in the test suppose he, he thinks that he doesn't know anything else he will not attend the test if he thinks that he knows everything he will not prepare for the test so automatically he makes a poor uh, study decision process so these are the indications of a Uh, meta cognition of a poor student he is having very poor meta cognition level meta cognition increases the student engagement meta cognition has the potential to empower the students to take charge of their own learning and to increase the meaningfulness of the students learning process this is the important point where the teacher has to do so we cannot uh, feed the students we have to make them to understand what is their level of knowledge where they are lagging begin how it will be useful for them and once you create that automatically they they will start their learning process that is that is a important this is a very very important point as a engineering teaching faculty we have to create among the students so then only what will happen is the poor students will get motivated and will start listening to the class that is the success in your class so this is a classification of the poor average medium student there is no awareness no action right here he is having awareness he is thinking that he is he is not having any knowledge but he is not taking any action for no action or no strategy is there here what happen is awareness is there he is not having that knowledge limited action few strategies he is average student just to clear the subject he is doing it and uh, uh, very good student very little student what happen is he is having awareness he prepares he takes appropriate steps and 
and he does well in the test this is what the uh, very good uh, topper students will be doing it this is the average student they'll be doing it so these two categories are this is a cat on the wall situation doesn't know what to do so these type of students we can bring them up and this type of category students you cannot do anything else at all no awareness no action means it's waste of time in spending time with them so this type of these two categories of students we can concentrate and we can motivate them and bring to the top level students so you have to understand what is the cognition level make them to understand what is their level how guide them how to prepare so that's all about the uh, different types of knowledge we deliver in the class we deliver factual knowledge conceptual knowledge procedural knowledge and meta cognitive knowledge so based on above three knowledge meta cognitive level we have to it's a self knowledge we have to make awareness among the students that what is the knowledge they are having it so automatically once you know you, are, you don't have any knowledge means what what will happen we take interest to gain that knowledge that is what is you have to create awareness what is their level once you do that automatically they start learning so as an engineering college students what happened they are mature enough now you have to make them to understand where it is where is their level so coming to the bloom section we now we'll enter into the bloom section we so the the left hand side part we have seen knowledge dimension we have seen and now we are going to see the uh, cognitive process the bloom section we level learning so which has already we have seen uh, cognitive aspect affective aspect and psychomotor aspect you can see this diagram this is a domains of learning process in school level we give them the basic knowledge and we don't touch the feelings or uh, physical activity or skill is not developed by the students in the schools we give them some basic knowledge about the facts that is the factual knowledge will be given or some conceptual knowledge will be given procedural knowledge will be given only in the college level so right so first what happen is our the now learning process related to head heart and the hand so head related to mental abilities that is we call it as cognitive domain that is what blooms is classifying it this is a, of course it is a education psychology term and coming to so once he gives the knowledge automatically what will happen he will have a behavior it reaches his mind or soul or heart and uh, he'll have the behavior that is behavior will change feeling will change and that we call it as affective domain in bloom taxonomy level the feeling what we students are feeling or what we are feeling is nothing but we say it as affective domain and uh, last what happen is once you have the feelings and affection immediately what you will do you will we will put into action that is a skill hand movement is there example if i am saying if you are burning 1 kg of coal it 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 emits around uh, 3.5 or 3 times or 3 and a half times of carbon dioxide will be emitted into the atmosphere and for burning for producing one unit of electrical energy we burn one unit of 1 kg of coal is produced and 3 and a half times co2 is dumped into the atmosphere you know the co2 atmosphere dumping leads to global warming and uh, so lot of problems you are facing actually because of the environmental pollution suppose any fan or anything is running unwantedly a light is burning i am telling you this is a cost this is a knowledge i am giving you so it goes to your brain now it gets stored and you get a feeling to save this environment so that is what is called as affective domain if you go and switch it off the fan or switch off the unwanted electric energy usages that is nothing but your psychomotor domain so the education has to touch a feeling as well as the knowledge which the students or everybody is gaining has to be useful to the society or the environment that is what the main purpose of education is it should not be innate knowledge in the classroom which is discussed and left out it has to touch the students heart it has to change their attitude and behavior towards the environment surrounding everything what are the subject we are going to teach if it is going to be a psychology class if it is going to be a ethical class if it is going to be an uh, design class so depending upon the subject sir the content will change and everything is related to society society and environment and he has to lifelong be it will be in his brain and the action has to be done by him that is what it is said so cognitive domain the mental knowledge knowing is the the blooms as classified as cognitive domain and the behavior feeling which we have that is the attitude we change is called as affective domain affection right we say affection is there that that is what the feeling that we call it as affective domain and once you have that feeling is there automatically we'll go on into put into action our body body or hands are put into action that is called as skill doing the psychomotor domain so this is what the three classifications from the basic we know mental abilities we know feeling we know doing but it is given a psychological term they are giving it as cognitive domain affective domain and psychomotor domain so 
in uh, their point of view they are giving in this way in our point of view it is mind soul and heart and hand that is general thing for the children's point of view if it is a college level point of view or teachers point of view mental abilities behavior and skill we say that is in terms of in education point of view bloom's level point of view we say it is cognitive domain affective domain psychomotor domain so these three domains is it so we are going to test the cognitive domain so that is what the bloom's has classified it so he is a person he is a person uh, benjamin samuel bloom uh, he was born in uh, february 1913 he expired on 1999 so he was an american education psychologist who examined restructured the way the teaching should be done how the teaching has to be done to maximize the learners performance how the students are learning so we teach them we set the question paper we set we evaluate it and that with that we leave it off but he is going beyond that it, it It continues to impact the way educational curriculum are structured to this day. So even the curriculum setting, even teaching methodology, assessment process, everything is now based on the Bloom's language, Bloom's Saxon way. Well, so Bloom's Saxon way divided learning into three psychology domain: cognitive domain, affective domain, and psychomotor domain. So he has given a technical terms. What we have seen as a uh, mind, mind, heart, and and the body relationship. So this, in the simple words, we are using it. knowledge feeling and doing or skill we can say it as uh, knowledge uh, affection affection and the skill these are things he has given in a technical terms in this way so where he, actually where he got this knowledge interest in this area is he was a controller of examination that is what uh, one of one of my senior most uh, person who was taking was selling so he was a co in an exam cell what happened is in one particular a group of students example one a particular students final year students are there means in one particular subject the all of the students have got around uh, about 90 to 100 almost all the people have got a grade in one particular subject and in another subject what happened is uh, there are more number of failures pass percentage is only 10 to 20 percentage in another subject there are fluctuations are there some people got uh, 50 percent of person have passed the so 10% of student got higher marks 10% got lower marks so it was a, a bell shape curve in one class it was a horizontal higher level in one subject in another subject all the people got fail and it was in a lower level horizontal line in another subject there was a graph a bell shaped graph was there it was totally distributed so he understood that there is some problem in the evaluation process because in a classroom all the people cannot get 100 marks right nobody will accept it and similarly if the, all the students are fail means also there is a problem in your teaching or students that are not understood or your question is very high level for the students so that is what uh, it provoked him to do some research activity in the assessment process from there only he has started his, uh, this research work so certainly when you think when all the students fail and when all the students pass when there is no variation is there automatically your evaluation process is wrong that is what he understood and there is a bell shaped curve is there means 10% of students would have pass would have got low mark 10% would have got higher marks and uh, average students would have got around 50 to 80 so you will be getting a bell shaped curve so as a good faculty or a good assessment method means you should get a bell shaped curve if you are getting a horizontal line there is some problem in your assessment process that is what from there only is interest towards assessment process to it and he started doing research in this area and he analyzed and did all this activity so this is what how the research has started so bloom section on me has totally One, two, three, four, five, six levels are there. So he has classified the knowledge. Uh, we have seen that knowledge, right? Different knowledges we are, give, we are giving the student. That is, uh, factual knowledge, conceptual knowledge, procedural knowledge, and uh, these types of knowledge we give to the students. He is classifying it. Uh, there are six level. The taxonomy is doing it. So how to assess these knowledges? So that is what the six levels of knowledge he is talking about. Bloom says. so one is knowledge six levels to so come application analysis synthesis and then evaluation process is there so first is remembering it so first uh, terminology is using is remembering the knowledge and second one is understanding it third one applying it fourth one is analyzing and finally to evaluate it at the complex level so so this is what the bloom section we says and uh, they have remodified it also bloom students are, students are there uh, previously blooms were there was synthesis one word was there now they removed it and they changed to uh, they have added analysis uh, create the last one is create actually 
so remembering is nothing but the knowledge which students will be remembering it and after giving the knowledge they'll memorize it so that is remembering knowledge after that they should understand what what the what the law says what are the knowledge what they having what is that they have understood and then they have to apply it then they can analyze then finally there will be a situation to evaluate it and create a new product so the with the simple knowledge which you are, you are giving the students what happen is it has to lead to evaluation level it has to create a new product then only you are become you are a you are successful in your teaching methodology you are a successful teacher otherwise what will happen is the knowledge which given will become an inner knowledge only so this is the taxonomy the bloom the set so the interdependence is there interdependence is there so before the, the interdependence of bloom's learning level can be classified with the following logic before we can understand a concept we must be able to remember it so if you example some uh, second law of thermodynamics or first law of thermodynamics or newton's law or anything else you have to give them the knowledge so they will be remember the students has to remember if i if i am asking you what is newton's third law means all of you say the equal and opposite reactions are there will be an if the forces are applied there will be an equal and opposite reaction will come into picture so that is what newton's third law without now without remembering what is the use and then what happen is we have to understand the concept what as it says if you if you force a ball on the wall what will happen automatically the ball will come back to you so you are applying the force the because of newton's third law it is coming back so that is what the understanding of the concept and if you are firing a bullet from the gun what will happen the bullet will bullet will hit the target at the same time the gun will be gun or the barrel will be returning back there will be some force can be observed which is nothing but opposite reaction of third law the newton's third law so you are understanding the concept over there so that understanding is we call it as and finally before you can apply the concept we must be able to understand it. so after understanding it we know the apply, application of the concept so when somebody is saying that in the bullet when the, when you are firing a bullet or bombarding uh, using a barrel automatically there will be opposite force it will be coming back so that that is application of the concept you are applying the third law you are using third law according third law okay newton's third law says that there will be opposite force will be there so you have to be very careful when you are firing a gun with the higher force what will happen is there will be opposite force will be there so automatically you have to be very cautious that is your application point of law and before we before we analyze it we must be able to apply it so we apply it then we'll go for analysis point of view and before you can evaluate it so these are all higher level understanding uh, remembering understanding and application is that we do in engineering classroom analyzing it evaluating it and creating is nothing but higher order levels so that we'll see we individually we'll see one by one so there are totally six terms are there that is what i want to try to say we have to remember understand apply analysis evaluate and create so let me see I, the the audio is visible is the audio visible audio you are able to hear no hello? no hello no audio no sir no audio no audio sir audio is not there right okay i'll go to the I'll, i have to come out of the presentation I'll, i have downloaded from the youtube actually because uh, continuously bombarding you with the concept and theory it will be boring so i thought the same concept i'll i'll deliver it through by video content uh, let me come out from this and uh, i will go to the link and share you the content i'll go to the youtube and i'll share it to you wait one minute one minute ఏంటది
is a uh, video visible yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah i'll i'll play the video now because uh, whatever i said the same thing is going to say now but uh, there will be some uh, break will be there for your brain continuously i was bombarding my knowledge with your with your brain right so some different way of approach i'm approaching so that through video also we learn it so that the classes the presentation made interesting this is one simple technique i'm telling you that's all audio is visible audio you are able to hear right now audio can able to hear hello uh, audio no, can able to hear uh, just play it no sir, sir no no sir <laughs> not audible sir it's very low sir audio is not coming audio is low huh? it's very low sir actually it's very low anyway anyway just listen it i'll send you the link after us also you can listen to it okay this is only to break the bottom of the class same thing what i taught he'll be saying it i'll share the link at the end of the class okay
Is my screen visible? Hello. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So the that was the break for the for you. So that continuously I was bombarding with my lecture. So that's it. I will share the link in the end of the video also in the presentation sure. and Man, just brief. maximize your screen, sir. Yes, yes, yes. I'll do it. So it was a brief knowledge about uh, what is the Bloom's level is there. So it was the video was talking about uh, you are teaching uh, what is a lemon in the classroom and uh, after understanding it, the students know, comes to know that lemon is in yellow color. That is understanding of the knowledge. It will be sore in taste. It is having a lot of vitamin C and those are things we remember. We understand the knowledge. That is what we call it as uh, understanding it. So after understanding it, suppose vitamin C is good for health. Those things we are giving knowledge to them. Suppose you are having deficiency, health deficiency is there. Nowadays, because of the corona effect to improve your immunity, they are asking to take vitamin C. So that is application. You have to apply the knowledge, so students have to apply it. So they stay consuming uh, whatever the content which is having vitamin C. That is application point of view. And if you are going for analyzed level, it is research level. So what does vitamin C does, how it is reacts to the body and all, it is analyzing level. What are the vitamin C in which content it is higher? And similarly, evaluating it. So the, those three level is nothing but higher level and you can create vitamin C what are the other options are available also you can compare and create it and so that those three level is higher level of uh, learning process in this actually. So that is what the video was saying about the a simple lemon how it is remembered understand and this thing is based on the bloom section only level. So coming to the remembering is nothing main important uh, six, six topics uh, blooms is saying about remember understand apply analyze, evaluate, and create. So in engineering classroom, we do these three activities, remember, understand, and apply. So what is remembering? Remembering is the act of retrieving knowledge and can be used to produce things like definitions or list. So that is what we say it as remembering. We have the students has to remember whatever uh, we are giving them. So the knowledge we are giving them. So it is the lowest of the taxonomy level. So among the six levels, it is the lowest of the taxonomy level. It is essential for learning process because learners need to have knowledge in place before it can engage it in a, with the higher cognitive levels. So example of remembering includes the loss, naming of the parts of human anatomy, recalling critical events on history, all those things will come under uh, remembering. That is uh, what we say as a factual knowledge, facts and conceptual knowledge we are giving here. The knowledge, we are seeing the classification knowledge, right? So that knowledge is classified in the remembering, remembering we do it. So they have to remember, unless you remember, you don't remember the third law, any other law, you cannot apply it over there, right? So that is what they say, so remembering requires no understanding of knowledge, only to recall. So just a memorization only. Remembering a basic level is nothing but the students, what you do, school day students, the school knowledge is not even memory, they memorize it. They don't understand what it is, where it is applied, everything and all, they, they may not be knowing it. If you ask them, they memorize it, mug it up and they write it out. That is what they do. Uh, the school level, the, this is what the knowledge that teachers are giving our, even for our children, all the same thing happens. Only remembering only they are doing it. They, are, they just remember it. They recall it and it will be there in the memory. They don't know where it is applied. If you go and ask any mathematics to any school students, they ask him where is the, what is a parabola? I mean, he'll define, he'll, he'll say some formula. But the, the school student, they, know where, they don't know where it is applied, why they are studying the subject. What is a parabola is, how it will be applied, how it will affect the system, nothing else they know about it. So the understanding point will be zero. So that is what the, there is a gap between the school level students and engineering level students. They only remember, they only memorize the uh, teachings, what the teachers are doing in the college, in the school level. So this is the first level in tax on me. And this is from the Bloom's taxonomy textbook, the cognitive process level remembering. And the remembering is retrieve relevant knowledge from the long-term memory. This is what the technical parameter is used. This from the, uh, these are the content directly from the source, from the Bloom's taxonomy textbook. If you are interested, you can Google it and you can download it, but it comes around 350 pages actually. So whatever is relevant from that, I have taken the content from that textbook because this is the source. From this textbook only so many people have so many content have been developed, journal has been written and all. So I have gone to the source. So under remembering, we have recognizing, recognizing and recalling. So recognizing is nothing but we need to identify. So 
so locating the knowledge in long term memory that is consistent with the presented material so we need to identify it so whatever the knowledge we have with the present situation or present the example stated we need to the student has to identify it and similarly retrieving or recalling so retrieving the knowledge is relevant knowledge from the long term memory so he has to recall it so we have to identify the knowledge we have to recall it recognize it based on the <coughs> memory point of view so example uh, there is a firing of the gun there is opposite reaction happens means you should identify what type of law to be applied first of all so then automatically you will be retrieving the knowledge what knowledge is there luton third law we have studied so way okay right this is the uh, third law that is to be employed we have to replace the knowledge from the long term memory recalling it so first of all we should know what type of knowledge is required that we have to recognize it which which law to be applied whether it is a thermal area design a manufacturing or computer science area so that is we had need, need to first of all identify the knowledge what is we, that is recognizing and the last one is we had to recollect what the particular knowledge what is we have stored in the brain so that is what is called as remembering process in psychological terms in bloom's uh, taxonomy level so these are the some sample questions we asked in the examination we blindly set some questions in the examination but we don't know what is oh, why we are asking that question for the students what what knowledge we are testing them what level it is there so according to bloom's level remembering we state home's law in part a question we ask right and in part b two more three more questions also we ask them to uh, define the process of constructor define the uh, term sensible heat latent heat state third law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics what is the use of local variables what is a pointer or a pointer c pointer this is related to computer science language list arithmetic operators in increasing order of precedence so define all those thing questions define describe all these types of questions we are asking for the students in the part a question which is nothing but we are testing the students knowledge on remembering aspect whether he is able to remember first of all he should remember that is the first level if he is not able to remember the rules and laws and regulation he cannot uh, he cannot apply it right so that 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 level we are to we are sensing the students memory capacity in this these are the questions we are asking in the assessment process so this nothing but for testing the knowledge of students in remembering aspect that is what uh, bloom is trying to say of course we are practicing it but we don't know why we are doing it how we are doing it what type of knowledge we are testing that is what uh, we are doing it in a systematic manner without knowing anything else what we are doing it all these days we are doing it but if you start using bloom taxonomy level we know that for this is for this purpose only we are setting the question paper for this purpose only we are going to test the student for this purpose only that your purpose of uh, knowledge which you are delivered you can you can you can you can under estimate your teaching methodology whatever you are given to the students what we do is based on the question level you are setting you can estimate the students how many people are able to answer this question based on that you can analyze your uh, delivery method you are delivered to the students how far it has reached so the remembering is a basic thing where the what students are able to remember that is simply without any understanding purpose coming to the next level so totally six levels are there remember understand apply analysis evaluate and create totally six levels are there when you are setting the question papers or when you are teaching it also so what happen is so first part a question and all is nothing but some of the terms we have seen that is remembering question now now coming to understanding in part b type of questions and all will be related to understanding type so example understanding which is defined as construction of meaning and building of relationship so as i said if you are teaching ohms law state ohms law that is a part a question if you go to the part b question you can give them a practical circuit over there design a circuit which gives maximum voltage for the given resistance means they can use apply ohms law understand the ohms law ohms law is proportional to current right v is equal to ir if you remember the proportionality so based on that relation they can find out if voltage is given and resistance given they can find out uh, for uh, what will be the maximum current you can achieve so that is what is called as understanding of the knowledge so for example grouping list of different animals into right categories that is one they they learn a different types of animals are there some animals are in the land some animals are in the marine some animals are in flying also so some animals will be in the land as well as in the uh, water also the they call it as amphibian so terrestrial animals are there marine animals are there so they know different types of animals if you categorize it we are just grouping them we are making them understand that is what we call the example explaining how one event on historical timeline impact on the other discussing the moral of a story so school days and all what happens we have attended comprehensive subjects right they give some paragraph and will they students will be asked about 
some different questions from that paragraph what is have understood uh, what happens some basic questions will be there what is the moral of the story so these are all nothing but what understanding level they are students are having that is what uh, comprehensive type of questions we ask in the school days so like that we have to ask questions in the in this manner only how the students are able to understand the concept how they have understood it they, we have to make them to think that is the main important thing of a teacher so this now we, what we are doing the bloom taxonomy discussion also what is that you have understood so far what is your understanding related to bloom taxonomy is can anyone have say what is that so far i have, i have thought about the knowledge so far we are talking about bloom taxonomy some videos also we have seen so generally bloom says that we have to teach them and touch the students mentality his attitude has to change so that is what the overall understanding we can understand from my point of view i don't know what is you have understood so far right so if it is a classroom one to one interaction i would have asked you the feedback from me immediately i would have asked you feedback but since it is online it will take more time so we are lagging me in the interaction now so what is your understanding so far in this uh, bloom section that is also comes under understanding point of view so first is basic knowledge remembering next we have to see that understanding how far you have able to understand the content which i have delivered i don't know how you have understood it now so far Where, i don't know if it are if you are interested in a psychology related if the interest is provoked automatically you will you will understand more things if the interest is going down what this fellow is selling some more uh, unwanted terminologies why this this is required for us uh, we are an engineering teachers why this subject is required uh, all those things if you are thinking in that mind mean automatically your interest will go down and uh, your understanding of the subject will be poor so because your affective your affective knowledge is getting affected your feeling or attitude towards the subject is decreased so i have to provoke that interest that is why i showed you video also to create some interest among the subject so that the affective domain is touched now the video what I, what i played would have touched the affective domain some interest it have created and then you will start learning process that is what is the process teaching learning process so second level is understanding and these are the in understanding these are different types of questions we have, we have started asking we are already we are using these terms in uh, asking the question but we don't know whether we are testing the understanding of the student these questions are asked to evaluate a student's understanding level so interpreting exemplifying classifying summarizing right comparing compare with one law or other law ideas explaining construct a model and explain so the summarizing it abstracting and generalizing it also we do it in them that is also one type of question we ask exemplifying nothing but illustrating and illustrating illustrating finding a specific example or illustration of a concept of a principle give example of various artistic painting styles these are all called illustration they are illustrating it and uh, interpreting is nothing but clarifying paraphrasing the same sentence you can reframe it also students can reframe it in their own language they can reframe it and write it so interpreting interpretation so if we see a movie and we interpret it right we can rewrite in our own words after seeing a movie or a paragraph can be interpreted what is that you have understood you can give a paragraph in a technical term and we can ask the students to interpret it clarification paraphrasing these and all uh, understanding level so regularly we have started using these terms actually so these are some of the examples explain the importance of sustainability explain what is difference between uh, the header file what is the difference between actual and formal parameters explain different ways of passing parameters function differentiate between entry and exit control groups this is related to some computer terminology i suppose example they are given sustainable engineering design explain the importance of sustainable engineering design importance what they have understood so all these questions are examples of how students have understood the concept or knowledge which are given to them how they learned it so that learning knowledge and learning process we are uh, testing under the level of bloom's second level of understanding it how they have understood the subject that is what is second level bloom's level third level is applying it bloom section we level it is applying it so he has to apply it now that is what uh, the third level says is applying involves remembering what has been learned having a good understanding of the knowledge and then being able to apply it to the real world subject situation so they should remember and they have after the the understanding has to happen once they have able to understand the subject only you can apply it right if you understood the bloom section only what happened the, you can go to your college and assess the set the question paper in bloom sir if you don't understand it what will happen it's very difficult to apply it so that is what is applying the uh, applying example applying in repairing a computer components 
So once you're able to remember the order of the components, once you're able to understand it, only what will happen? You know what are the important components, how to remove it and how to assemble it can be up in place. That is application point of view. So the, the presentation which I am doing now is nothing but I have understood, I have remembered the concept, I have understood the Bloom's taxonomy level, so that I'm able to apply it. I'm applying the concept to you and making you do teach those. So presentation is also an application point of view. Presentation on climate change. So unless I'm very expertise in this knowledge, I cannot teach you, right? So that is what application point of view. I learned it, I understood the concept, remembered, I understood it, I'm able to apply it now. So I'm practically applying in preparing question papers. Also. If you go to the college, if you start preparing question paper on Bloom's level, you are applying. That is what the third term knowledge is. So these are the Bloom's level content from the textbook, executing and implementing it is the thing, but application point of view. So I think we are lagging again now. Let me run fast. Hmm? Uh, these are some of the questions where uh, application point of view, these questions that we are asking. Uh, ball is dropped from six meters in the ball travel. This is application point of view. The problems we generally ask is nothing but uh, it's related to application point of view. So these are the sample questions for application. And analysis point of view, what happens? So up to that only we can evaluate the students now. It is a lower order thinking level skills. Lower order thinking level skills we are able to do it. So after that, four, five, six, that is analysis point of view. What we do is it is uh, higher level. So example, we give them a mini project, right? Or uh, example, break material into constituent parts, determine how the parts relate to one another and to an overall structure or purpose. Differentiating, discriminating, focusing, selecting. This is related to distinguishing relevant from irrelevant parts, important and unimportant parts of presented material and organizing. Under organizing, we are finding, integrating, outlining. So determining how elements fit or function within a structure. So this is what organizing knowledge is there. Attributing is deconstructing. So determining a point of view, bias, values, or intent underlying presented material. So these are the some of the terms uh, Bloom's is telling in analysis point of view, breaking down the content. Uh, if you take a law, there are different contents there. You can break down it, interrelate it. And you can identify which is relevant, which is not relevant. So all those point of view, the students can do it. Example, uh, you give them a conference, dismantle all the part of, parts of a component to a student, ask them to assemble it. So unwanted elements also will be there. They can discriminate and remove them. That is what in uh, this analysis point of view, they'll know it. which knowledge is relevant, which knowledge is not relevant and all we'll be doing it. So that is what differentiating, organizing and attributing point of view. Analysis point of view, we do it here. It is a higher order level, right? So this, uh, for the third year students only, they'll be, we'll be using analysis point of view questions will be asked. So here we are doing analysis point of view. You can see some of the questions shown here. Uh, is 10 students, five males, give two ways of predicting the score, analyze them for fitting model. So this is all uh, analysis point of view. We are comparing the two groups, which group is having higher knowledge, which group is having lower knowledge, and you can predict it, analyze it, right? So, so this is what, uh, differentiating, organizing, and attributing point. These three point of view, we have to set the questions in that point of view. So if you are setting the question this way, it is called as analysis point of view. This, in part C, we do this. Justify answer, written statement can only be used in written single value, justify it. Or what do you infer from this result? So example, a research case study can be given and ask them to compare the two groups of students who's learning poor, who's learning well, why they are not doing it. So all those things can be done in analysis point of view. From their understanding and application, uh, students will remember, understand it, apply it, and then they have to infer. What is that they are inferring from this? So that is what we call it as analysis point of view questions we have to set. So this is what uh, we do it. And uh, last, uh, fifth one is evaluation point of view. So here we do checking and critiquing. So this uh, make judgment based on the criteria and standards. So. We give them the students a set of uh, results and everything they have to analyze it and we are directed. So example, uh, checking of thesis we do as a PhD guides, right? So we detected what is the standard they are following, whether they as per literature they are getting the output or not. We check the, whether the knowledge they are presented is correct or not. And we, we critic, we give critic also. We st strongly say that your answer is wrong. This result is not possible means I should be very strong in the subject. The knowledge which I have, up to analysis point of view, I am very strong. Then only I can evaluate the process. 
so generally students also should be very cons very strong in their in their knowledge and generally they can evaluate a system or a process so we have checking will be there critiquing will be there coordinating detecting monitoring and testing if any equipment is running you train in the student if the process is wrong they have to strongly say the process is wrong so it's nothing but evaluation process make judgment based on the criteria and standards set so judge so detecting inconsistency between a product and external criteria determine whether the product has external consistency detecting appropriateness of a procedure for a given problem so you are taught in the procedure something else is wrong they should be in a situation to identify what is wrong in the system how to identify what is unwanted element is there whether if the environment is very high what will happen uh, suppose example uh, if you are uh, if you are having a two wheeler there is no engine oil is there automatically your engine will cease yeah because engine engine oil removes heat energy from the your engine if the oil is not there automatically you can check it detect it monitor it, and testing it automatically you know the result so automatically the knowledge you are giving is so it is critic is telling that don't run the use a vehicle that is what we can judge it out so this application of the uh, this is a fifth level of uh, bloom's level we are evaluating it and the last one is create that also we cannot do it but it is a final stage we are through the project only we can evaluate it. so whether the student is able to create a new product whether uh, he can file as a patent or whether he can publish a paper is nothing but is related to evaluation process so this is the last level that the student has to do it example you teach a subject from the first year to second year to final year in the final year when you get a product developed by, developed by a student he is filing a patent means you are a successful teacher the, the process has happened in a good manner and you are getting the output from the student so generating it planning producing so designing devising a procedure for accomplishing some task constructing inventing a product so these and all happens only in the project level of students so in the final year we test in the students in the project level so these and all higher order levels of the students <coughs> we ask him to download some 10 journal and we ask him to go through it and present a, a review paper so that is nothing but is uh, we are giving the ask the students to evaluate the knowledge evaluate knowledge process evaluation process so totally six levels of uh, bloom sacks are me we have seen one is remember understand apply analysis evaluate and create so the two knowledge level that is uh, evaluate and create level is higher level uh, it's a higher order cognitive level so example this can be analyzed only by projects open ended problems open book tests we can give them solving exercises right ask them to refer journal and produce review papers all those thing will nothing but related to evaluate and create knowledge this all call higher order level thinking levels so unless students are very strong and very intelligent really this level can be tested out so automatic uh, teetering milk mission to order of a cow the milk dairy wants to automate the milking process so the milking process involves attaching the milking cups to the teats design a system for the same so this is what the uh, create this is the project actually if a student go for industrial visit project they are giving us a project so he has to design it then uh, what happen is based on the all the above previous level he will be applying it and he will be designing a whether he has to go for a pneumatic uh, type of uh, sucking system clip will be required compressor will be required a design has to be done component has to be fabricated skill is required so all the the what are all he has developed he will come into a new product he will be creating it he will be evaluating creating to here so another example is electric vehicle uses lithium ion batteries batteries has to be charged and get discharged during the use so this is uh, electrical vehicle problem what will be the charging time what is the discharging time what is the battery required this is all related to evaluate and create knowledge we are testing the students we are, we do in uh, four years of studies or three years of studies whether at the polytechnic level engineering level we are doing it but we don't know what is what what in a technical term we don't know it is so uh blooms level we do it remember understand apply analysis evaluate and create so this level we are testing the students if you know the process and do it automatically the uh, efficiency will be more that is what without knowing anything else if you are doing it with knowing everything and we do it the efficiency will be effectiveness will be more that is what uh, today's classes so example these are some of the examples the english primary english teacher teaches in the classroom uh, from the school days what happened we learn letters right verbs we learn we write sentence then uh, we learn from the newspapers right students uh, in the school levels they learn from the newspapers they read some grammars they read some fiction books and finally when they come out they study some ba literature in the college level and 
they are able to write in their own words they can write up so uh, write story books right and they can speak in their own languages also so that is nothing but they are creating new textbooks and uh, they are giving critics also they can evaluate and give a review of the textbook so that is their knowledge of the literature so this is a simple example if a literature student is there how he starts remembering from school days he starts in and uh, words and sentences is understanding in school days then he is applying in writing the sentence in school days itself then once he enters a college what happens is he starts analyzing he, he reads about more number of literatures shakespeare's or so many stories textbooks relates and finally when it comes out he becomes a journalist example he becomes a journalist in writing uh, articles for the journal he is evaluating and creating it he writes a textbook on his own that is what is it means automatically what happens uh, we have successfully uh, the learning process has helped him to become a successful uh, book author editor, if it is an english literature student uh, this is a biology student related to Related to agriculture line. Uh, coming to engineering point of view, if an engineering student develops a patent or creates a new product for the society, means we start from the first year. First year we give them basic factual knowledge. Then second year we give them conceptual knowledge. Third year we give applying knowledge. And final year we are we are we are making the students think and analyze it, analyze understand the problem, interrelate it, and finally students evaluate it and creates a product. So. When a student from engineering college out of 60 students, they are they are able to product uh, develop a new product in the in the final year. They are able to file a patent in that also. What happens is your your teaching learning process is successful. So that is what uh, engineer the NBA committee when they are seeing it, they see what your what is the students students project they have done. That is what your output they will be measured. So the, that is the output will be. how the students are able to create so you give them knowledge and you make them to feel and create a new product means you are a success, your knowledge process or teaching learning process is successful that is what uh, is nothing but this is and similarly the training which i am giving in bloom saxon me are the process which aict helps to give for the past uh, one week you will be attending right so you have to remember it you are understanding it but the problem is uh, i am i am giving you the knowledge and you are able to understand it but application point of view we don't have time i can get, ask you to set a question paper analyze it so that will be the application point of view and you can analyze it what is the old conventional papers what is the new papers as per new system what is happening and uh, you can also compare with the existing college system and you can create your own system also so that is what the bloom section that is that is what for a training of employees so you are you have been trained now the aict is asking you to train you So once you go and create a new set of question papers, you apply using Bloom Section Eleven. I have or the process or the workshop which has been organized is successful by the ACT or the for the college. So so this everywhere we whatever we do, whatever the teaching learning process happens, this Bloom's level six level comes into picture. If your uh, creativity is created, you are coming out a new product means the process is successful enough. If you only remember it, it is a rot memory and it is not applied. It is going to be a uh, inert memory. If you, If you are able to understand this well and good, but you have to apply it. The student has to apply it out. You have to go and apply this knowledge which you are learning to the in your day-to-day uh, -day activities in the college level. So that is why the workshop will be successful enough. And afterwards, if you are interested, you can do analyzing point of view. You can see what are different methods. You can create your own. You can compare it. All those activity and you can come out with a new methodology also. There are so much of new methodologies are there. So that is what is finally is creating is. If you create a new methodology, then this workshop is a successful thing. That is what. There. So any process, whatever you do, you have to analyze in the Bloom's level only actually. It is. So this is summarization point of uh, Bloom's level. Remembering from the bottom, you have to go recalling information, understanding, constructing meaning by interpreting and summarizing information, and uh, applying is implementing what was learned. Remembering, understanding phases, analyzing is breaking down information to constituent parts, establishing how they relate to one another. evaluating is making judgments based on the criteria and standards by checking the and critic critics can be given for that whether it is right or wrong strongly we can say and creating is putting elements together form a new concept and function as whole this is total summary of the uh, bloom's level so so in teaching level also you can do it in assessment level is mostly this level will be useful for assessing the students and uh, previously based on the bloom's original word there was a knowledge comprehension application analysis synthesis and evaluation and now the bloom students have changed to uh, some of the terms uh, they have changed now because students has to create now previously evaluation is enough but now the knowledge level is expectation is more they have to remember 
comprehension nothing but understanding application is they change the applying analysis analyzing it synthesis is removed and they made it to evaluation and finally they have to create so this is the this is i am so far i am talking about revised bloom sacks on me only this is their device the students device compared to the original one so this is again the same thing they are comparing it with the different words level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 and level 6 uh, so these are the some of the questions we are asking the students at different level part a part b and part c questions we don't know whether part a means we ask one two mark question part b means three mark question part c means we so far we are understanding that it is a uh, six mark or 12 mark question to be asked not like that actually part a is nothing but you had asked only remembering questions remembering understanding question part b is nothing but you can ask understanding type of questions and part c means you had asked only applying application oriented types of questions to be asked so choose demonstrate illustrate interpret sketch solve use write like that only we had asked <coughs> similarly understanding is related to classify describe explain so these are the part b questions we are asking so far we are asking it but if you know why we are asking means automatically there will be no mistakes at all in the question number second and if you see remembering question duplicate list memories recall repeat everything is there this and all basic remembering question so part a part b part c based on numbers or numbers and marks only we are setting question paper but based on the blooms level this is the level we are to set the question paper so we we uh, we use all the three level apply understanding and remember the question analyze evaluate creating will be a higher order level right so lower order questions level lower order thinking level and higher order thinking level they classify the blooms level is so remember understand and apply will be a lower order thinking level higher order thinking is evaluate and create this analysis some overlapping will be there each level it is there. so it is adopted from anderson and rathwal 2001 these are the bloom students actually it is so i have i have uh, taken all the content from the directly from their uh, bloom textbook only so now so far we have seen about the uh, knowledge what is the knowledge different dimension knowledge we have seen that is factual knowledge conceptual knowledge procedural knowledge and meta cognitive knowledge and uh, other side we have seen the cognitive process that is bloom's level remember understand apply analysis evaluate and create so based on the knowledge and the bloom's taxonomy level uh, we have we are there this is a interrelation showing the list recognize recall identify so if it is a list means it is a factual knowledge remember if you take first level remember the listing means primary and secondary colors if you list it it is a factual knowledge suppose symptoms of exhaustion that is a medical term it is related to conception knowledge we are able to recognize it and uh, recall how to perform a cpr function means it is nothing but procedural knowledge we are we are asking them to recall it and similarly in remember uh, bloom's level identify strategies for retaining information means it is a mega meta cognitive knowledge self knowledge we are testing the student so it is a matrix is showing the relationship between the different levels of knowledge and the bloom level example if you take understand summarize the uh, features of a new product so that is nothing but factual knowledge in uh, bloom's level it is understand if the, the knowledge wise the types of knowledge we are seen we are testing the students knowledge what what facts factual knowledge is having suppose classify the adhesives by toxicity means it is uh, we are asking the students testing in the bloom's level is understanding level and uh, under conception knowledge we are testing them in the conception knowledge we are testing the students here suppose clarify the assembly instruction means that is a procedural knowledge and uh, predict the one's response to uh, culture shock or something is the term is there means it is nothing but meta cognitive self knowledge what students are having so uh, this is bloom's level this is knowledge level what type of knowledge is students are having we are testing them in different level bloom's level is basic level remember understanding is level apply level analyze evaluate and create level so whatever you are teaching learning process we do we can uh, evaluate the students in these types of level it has to done final output is some new output has to come out from the process so after this class if you go and do analysis part you produce a new journal or new technology new methodology means that is uh, we have succeeded it so the knowledge which i am giving is nothing but conceptual factual knowledge now and uh, last i am going to teach you the procedural knowledge how to set a question paper and meta cognitive is nothing but your self knowledge what you are going to gain and uh, bloom's level is this other level so if you start analyzing this it will be easy for you to set the question papers actually so you can see here this is again the same uh, diagram showing apply and remember facts can be tested by using and uh, concepts can be tested by using remember understand analyze evaluate level procedures can be done using 
this level and uh, metacognition level can be done by analysis evaluate level so bloom's level can be tested the left hand side gives a knowledge level so types of knowledge you should know types of bloom's level you should know then you can set the question paper in what level the students can be analyzed so i think in the end i will display the video there time is not there i suppose i will give the link also so this is a overall recall of the first slide which i showed so we have started with the null approach and uh, the types of knowledge what type of knowledge we are giving is nothing but procedural knowledge the reduce recycle or conservation approach is not a factual or concept it is a procedural knowledge you can it will fall in any one knowledge and uh, we can test this knowledge by means of bloom's level how the student is able to remember this knowledge whether he is able to understand it whether he is able to apply it whether he is able to analyze the concept the same uh, energy conservation point recycle whether he is able to evaluate or whether he is able to create a new product so suppose uh, there is a problem in the plastic waste recycling it he can recycle it all you can come out with a new product you can use it all so because the plastic is a major problem plastic bottles from that see that any new product can be formed so that is a create so from the procedure knowledge we have given you can test the students knowledge by setting question paper in all these level remember understand apply and and analyze level and create level is nothing but project level so this is how it happens so we are testing them in the cognitive knowing level only we are not testing the students in affective domain and muscular uh, doing domain so these are the three domains bloom just said already right so cognitive affective and uh, psychomotor domain this is the first slide we have shown this is brain related this is related to heart affective domain and the last one is your physical action domain these two domains we are not testing the student so that will be tested once the students go to the industry only so uh, nba that's why i asked feedback from the alumni feedback and uh, what is the students able to alumni feedback and employee feedback all we are asking so this this level they are they want to test it whether students are able to uh, do some physical activity and effectively attitude how how is their attitude they are so these can be tested only in the industry level so that's why nba asks uh, alumni feedback and employee feedback what is that they are doing so that level only we can test it out right so these are the three things and the affective domain is related to attitude emotion values interest and feelings etc and this is the affective domain characteristics of course it is not required for us but anyway just to inform me i am doing it so this is the psychomotor domain that is physical activity level what are the skills if you take the students to the laboratory we teach the students by watching and copying they do manipulation by demonstration process they do precision performance becomes more expert and actions are more precise and articulation several skills can be performed together in harmonious so that is articulation level this is naturalization level based on their uh, high performance level achieved with the action becoming so this is related to psychomotor domain this the pedagogical terms used by the blooms level and just uh, time is i think only 20 minutes left out i suppose right so let me rush it up and uh, lastly i want to say that this is a uh, learning uh, level so when you are lecturing in the students learn by only 5 percentage when you they when they read it 10 percentage audio visual by 20 percentage retention will be there and they practically do some demonstration 30 percent retention will be there if they do a group discussion point of view 50 percent of the knowledge they gain will be remembered practice by doing will be by 75 percentage when you teach others it will become 90 percentage so whatever the knowledge or learning process happens this is a if the, if the process if you achieve in this way they will be able to remember it suppose if, now i am doing lecturing point of view only 5 percentage of the knowledge you'll be able to remember it and if you if i give you some assignment like thing we'll return back tomorrow and if i for example if one or two days of time is given if i give you some assignment or something else you go read then what happens is reading happens 10 percent you remember it the audio visual is nothing but the video presentation which i made right so again 20 percentage you can you can hear it and you can see it also 20 percent you can do it demonstration is i'm asking you to take a question paper and analyze it and come for the presentation tomorrow means 30 percent of the knowledge you'll remember it and if i form a two three groups and ask you to discuss and present means again 50 percent of discussion will happen here 50 percent of knowledge you'll be remembering it you can learn it and suppose i'm asking you to set your own question paper means practice by doing you go and implement your college means automatically 70 percent of knowledge you'll be able to remember it when you start taking class when you teach if you go to the college and teach to students group of teachers or if you go to a college and teach a teach group of teachers over there, 90 percent of the knowledge you'll remember it all. So that is what this uh, learning pyramid says. So this is also the learning pyramid. So suppose you want to teach any new concept, see that which area you will adopt it because 
uh, reading only 10 percentage people able to remember 20 percentage what they hear 30 percent what they see watch videos so i am uh, i am reading it right i am giving lecture now you are hearing it you are seeing it and along with that some video content i am given so that video content is attractive for the students so whenever you are taking class see that some video content is played so that will attract the student that will uh, because they both do it at a time they they see it as well as they hear it also so it will be more effective level so that's why I myself included one more video content also there. Let me see whether I can play it. So 50% what we they see and they hear it. Uh, they do demonstration process of the project, all those things they do, right? Conference, presentation, all those things is there. They hear 30% what they say and write. So partisan hands-on workshop, design collaborative lessons. So this is a group study or group activities, project level they do it. And 90% what they do, the simulate the model, design performance, do the real thing world situation. So they go to the industry and they do 90% they do it in the industry level. So this is, if you, this, this diagram will tell you that what level we are effectively delivering the content to the student. So what will be the, the learning methodology, how the, how the learning happens. So whatever you are doing, lecturing and this thing, what I am doing is up to this level, I am doing it now. 30% only, you will be able to remember it. You can learn it. Remaining, uh, remaining other two part, I have to make you to uh, give some uh, assignments, ask you to set a question paper, discuss it, all those things if I do it. My the learning process of you will happen at 50 to 60 percent. I can achieve it now. I, I'm, I'll be able to achieve only 30 percentage. What I'm doing is now. So, like that, you plan your delivery content metal to the materials to the students in this way. So, now let me go to the time is not there. So, I will bypass all those things, POs and all. You can learn. I'll go to the question paper now. Actually, the NBA said 12 NBA or rabbit system is telling that. The engineering graduates should have 12 characteristics when they come out from the college. So that is what they call it as graduate attributes, attributes of the graduates or program outcomes. They call it as program outcome. So these are the 12 characteristics any engineer should have. So what are those 12 characteristics? Nothing but they are talking about engineering knowledge, some basic knowledge they should have. And they should have the uh, problem analysis capacity. They should identify, formulate, review, research literatures, Right, so they should identify what type of problem it is related to using the first principle of mathematical, natural science, and engineering science. So they should be in a situation to analyze it. They are going to the literature research and analyze complex engineering problems. What is the problems existing? And then once you know the problem, only what we'll do, we can go for design and development of solutions. So design solutions for complex engineering problem that they are they should have that capacity. This capacity they should have. So related to society environment point of view. So now we are in a COVID means we need, the problem is COVID now, right? And breathing, breathing inhalers or problem is there, hygienic condition problem is there. So, so many problems are there. So you can come out with a new, new solutions for this facing the COVID situation now. And we, newspapers and articles that I have seen, a lot of inhalers have been designed, ventilators, lack of, lack of ventilators are there. So from single uh, cylinder, how multiple ventilators can be designed. So that is a design solution. Problem is lack of ventilators. And design solution, so many people have came out with a design solution. So into that level, the engineers has to be produced. So this is a third level. And fourth level is conduct investigation of complex problem. So use research-based knowledge and research methods, including design of experiments. And this is research level. So after designing it out, we need to know what are the difficulties are there in the parameters affecting all those things. And final optimized product should be into the market. And these are the four basic uh, complex engineering problem area related to that. After that, what happened is uh, the 12 characteristics are related to modern tool usage. This is not all general. The, the first four is related to basic engineering level knowledge only. And again, this 12 characteristics is also based on Bloom's level, based on the uh, Bloom's taxonomy level only they have framed it. So modern tool usage is nothing, nothing but uh, advanced software and all those things has to be used. And engineering and society apply reasoning informed by the contextual knowledge to assess societal knowledge. So this is a, they are classifying the contextual knowledge. This is a, again a, a psychological term they are using. The conceptual knowledge we have seen, right? It is uh, contextual knowledge. It's nothing but the knowledge which is learned related to environment in constrained environment. Under what context he has done this? So under what environment the knowledge has to be delivered, under what environment knowledge has to be applied. So that is what is called as contextual knowledge. This is the what. So generally in the law concern, concern under what context they will see. A person has committed a mistake, 
under what situation he has done that mistake they will consider that what context that is what the technical term they say so seventh one is environment and sustainability as an engineers impact of professional in solution society and environment later how the environment is getting affected and there are social responsibilities and ethics is required from the engineers point of view ninth one is they should work in individual and team work tenth one is communication effective communication is required and uh, 11th one is project management finance related related thing it is related to industry area can we train them in giving small projects 12th one is lifelong learning lifelong learning is uh, through online courses the students has to be in a such situation to update the knowledge and the process what you are doing is also lifelong learning process only you are upgrading a knowledge in using bloom's level how to set the question paper and all what you are doing is also lifelong learning lifelong we have to keep on updating yourself that is what uh, they have to do so this is affective domain feeling they should have that feeling to learn they are so metacognitive level they should have their own knowledge we are not lagging in begin so we have to study more subjects so that level is they said by lifelong learning so if you overall see 12 graduates attribute again it's based on the bloom cell they have set it so all the engineers who is coming out has to be tested in this 12 pos only so coming to the question paper setting i think we have 10 minutes only this is summary of all the 12 pos i think i'm rushing up right uh anyway let me see we go to the question paper point of view so as i said the question paper has to be set in the so this is what our education system this most of the this this image most of you have seen it everybody is genius so what happens is as an evaluator as a teacher what we do we make all the different people characters different people have different capacity different uh, characteristics will be there different capacities will be there and we ask all the here is doing asking to climb the tree see whether elephant can climb the tree whether or the fish can climb the tree it's not possible right so that is what our education system said by albert einstein everybody is genius but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid so that is what the education system we are doing that's what the evaluation process we are doing it so so what is their capability to what level they had to be tested is a major important thing you cannot ask a research level question to a school level student you cannot ask a simple question to a research level student like that we need to know what is their testing capability level how the testing has to be done that is what is major very very important thing is so this is what the blooms level understanding apply analysis creating and evaluating and creating it so this three level of course analyzing also we sometimes we do in the internal assessment as well as in the final examination process and analyzing evaluate creating we do in the course projects mini projects major projects and uh, one more term we call it as i'll tell you a capstone project this is also a new term i'm using it here from the literature i got it it's nothing but giving a review review topic you give a problem to the student ask him to go to the literature and write a review paper so he has to give a review paper what is the problem what are the solution from the literature they are doing it and within a short period of time he can submit the presentation actually from the literature it's nothing but a writing a review paper actually so that is what we call it as a capstone project they call it as capstone project it's a new methodology for analyzing the <laughs> student capacity level so in this level we have to analyze assessment methods are different cognitive level so Uh, the conduction of internal examination unis examination and all we are testing only the students remember understanding and applying level very rare cases case studies if you are giving you can analyzing purpose it can be done and creating an evaluation can only done by the uh, major major projects and capstone was nothing but the review, review process this is assessed through these areas so this is in uh, some certain insection uh, in one college when i was setting a question paper they given insection to set the question paper in this way you have to set the question paper lower order level intermediate order level higher order level so if the question paper is set to very easy level what will happen is students all people will score if you set to only in remember and understanding type what will happen uh, define say it recollect so that will be full of question paper will be in 30 to 40 percent that type of question should be there and intermediate level is understand and apply this overall upper level we call it as so 50 to 60 percentage of marks should be in this area intermediate level and uh, analyze and evaluate level 60 to 20 percentage we have to the question paper it should be in set in this manner so when you are setting the question paper the mark distribution should be in this in this level only so they are given these are the terms of course remember understand apply analyze evaluate create 
this practically in an in an autonomous institution this was instruction given for setting the question paper and uh, lo io and ho stands for lower order level intermediate level and higher order level and uh, uh, they they have been given instruction of this uh, part a what will be the question will be there part b what will be the question will be there and part c what type of question to be asked so if you see this is the question i have set is for a uh, uh, pattern writing pattern pattern related exam part a this what uh, you can see here it's a two mark question and the bt stands for bloom's level r stands for remember and understand this type of question only should be asked in part a most probably remember will be there understanding most all in the part b will be there some questions we can ask uh, you have to grade it out what type of question is it what will the good will business give examples means what will happen it is understanding point of view to what what extent the students understanding level can be tested what is a cyber law means it is remember the law has to be remembered right memory from the memory so this course outcome is nothing but every subject will be having five units right so uh, probably we will be having six outcomes will be there for course at the end of the course if they are reading about the pattern laws and regulation means uh, students should be familiar with the pattern laws trademarks rights so like that some six outcomes will be there for each course that is what we call it as a course outcome it may be having five or six that is what it is said previously we had five units will be there generally but overall outcome of the course after studying the course what the students will be able to understand that is the outcome based education is so that outcome is this is what the co1 co2 co3 is set here so in future if you are following it this will be the type of questions has to be set and all the universities as it is insisting to follow this pattern only actually so based on the bloom survey we had to set it out and you can see part b questions here you should not ask here remember question or remember or understand question so here here we are the, they are asking compulsory questions from uh, i have asked in the application point of view part b they have asked 16 mark question they have asked so it's a application point of view so there was a case in uh, bajaj two wheeler i have asked a question what is that problem is there how they have problem what was the problem on the practically asked him to it's a practical question actually some current the, it has a case was filed by the bajaj bajaj and the tvs company and i asked him what was the problem in the pattern infringement that i practically asked it is application point of view how was infringement settled is a practically some problem has happened and i asked the students analyze also this application point of view asked and similarly if we go to the part c it is a 16 mark question again and <coughs> some questions are related to understand some questions are related to uh, remember and these are the distribution of marks so if you see that they are asking to you have to prove the percentage under bloom's level uh, remember in part a how much percentage you asked this is a percentage of marks in part b how much of questions you asked related to remember understand and apply in part c understand and apply how much questions i have asked so totally around uh percentage of range i, I have to mention it here so 14 percentage i have asked in remember 70 percentage i asked in understand only 16 percentage i asked in uh, application point of view so so the application point of view will be a tough question understanding point will be average question remember will be very easy question so 14 marks all the students can score average student can go 70 marks the tough students only are higher indian students will get can attempt the 16 mark question is so totally 100 marks so this is what the bloom survey based of question and uh, most of the colleges started following it if you see the pie chart over here 70% is related to understanding level and uh, 16 percent related to apply level 14 percent related to remember level so this is what is that this is the general range it may vary so if you see remember understand it should be 30 to 40 percentage only the question paper should have application point of view it, it is having around 50 to 60 percentage analyze point of view 16 to 20 percentage can be there so this will be the range to be set and after setting the question paper you have to and uh, calculate it and show it also what is the range whether it is following it or not so this is one model question paper given by acity i think with this slide uh, one or two slide i'll stop it right uh, in um, i have one more 5 minutes is there for question session and so now they are going for po course outcome is there they are going for po as well as a performance indicator this performance indicator connects po and co actually there's a program program outcome also they are asking to check the students in the question paper itself previously there was not there we calculate co from that co only we calculate po so it is actually a separate topic how to calculate co and po itself in mba related activity but just to show you knowledge about what mba is expecting this will be the future question they are asking you to set 
what is what program outcome is nothing but characteristic of engineers to what level we are testing it how we, we are able to achieve it out so if you are not able to achieve it after the end of the course next when you are taking it you have to rectify your mistake that is what they are trying to say outcome based education nothing but what is the outcome you got and how you are going to rectify it out in the next next academic year or like that so that is why the assessment process is very very important and and to this level only technically we have to do it is a uh, education bloom section is session uh, language of teachers now it is they become a language of teachers so this is the example of a course outcome if it is a microprocessor subject students will be able to interpret architecture analyze it and interfacing circuit all the what and all microprocessor students will be studying out this is will be the course outcome will be there so it may be 5 or 6 will be there based on that only the you, we set the question in unit 1 unit 2 now it has changed to course outcome 1 2 3 4 like that and which course outcome we are asking question and suppose students are getting more mark in co1 and co2 this this particular area they are very poor means we have to improve ourselves so the co outcome will improve where we will get the feedback and we have to see that how the teaching methodology can be improved that is what the co outcome is there po outcome is nothing but characteristics of the engineers that also we are they are act is asking you to incorporate in the question paper itself previously we are doing it separately so this is a table this is interrelated and this is the map shows the co po attainment level this is uh, the table competency mapping they are given this po is related to co this is totally a separate area because lack of time was there but just i'll go through it these are the performance parameters indicators the act is guiding us they are given us how to relate uh, po and uh, how you are testing it so from this you can set 4.4.4 we are testing competency these are the indicators they are given so overall what i want to say is this is how the question paper will be in future and uh, what i have given is nothing but bloom's level how your paper is set this question paper is set based on bloom's level co level and po level is again a, it's a separate topic is there actually right so we don't have time now so anyway i prepared it let us see now right so you can see here the bloom distribution level and you can see co1 co2 how much of percentage of marks is there you can parallelly you can draw the achievement level also when the students is scoring very low in co3 you have to see how to improve it so this is how the question paper has to be set and you have to draw the bar chart and show the in the most of the institution they started following this the percentage of marks co level and the bloom's level what level the bloom question paper is set if the question paper so that is what bloom's output is tested here bloom's felt that question paper should not be easy question paper should not be very tough so so we have to set the question paper the 18 percentage is understanding level remembering level apply level so that level we are testing it and so that you get a you test the students in different levels that is what it happened you won't get a output will be not be in a horizontal graph or a bell shaped graph will be getting it uh, the performance indicator and po will uh, it is based on the act level only i given the guidance you can check it out also so this is a high level of thinking level that we do it that already touched upon it and these are the references i refer this is uh, taxonomy of learning teaching and assessing uh, this is from the bloom's textbook and some of the content i taken from examination reform policies that is given in the act website a manual is given and presentation also given suppose anybody is interested i can share my knowledge there is nothing wrong in that now uh, because of uh, lack of time i have touched you the bloom section me i given you insight about based on bloom how the question papers are set and future question papers how it will be and the last one uh, final to conclude i want to say is that from the albert einstein sayings it is not so very important for a person to learn facts for that he does not really need a college right you can learn them from the books student generally what say why do they come to colleges they 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 learn from the books it's already available the value of education in a college environment is not, not the learning of many facts but training of the mind to think something that cannot be learned from the text so as a teacher giving knowledge is nowadays what happens students will get it out from different environment different sources are available knowledge is not an important criteria but you have to that is cognitive level the cognitive level of knowledge is students will get it out you have to touch them in the affective domain that is psychological domain thinking level you have to make the students think so to that level you have to take class as well as set the question paper once they started thinking it out automatically they'll you yeah, they'll you will be touching their feelings right affective domain will be touched in and so that 
automatically the uh, psychomotor domain that is they deliver new useful information output to the society by means of a new product whether they are an industry or whether they are an entrepreneur that is what you will be achieving so as a teacher make the students think instead of concentrating on rod memory process teaching learning process make the students to think that is what uh, if, if your students are developing a new product then you are teaching learning process is successful enough so with this i will close my lecture i don't know whether it was in interesting for you or it was boring because some of the terms were psychology related uh, any questions is there you can ask now hello sir am i audible yeah one minute one minute one minute i'll stop the presentation yeah yes tell me oh, sir sir so, uh, we are having list of subject uh, for the total four years uh, many of the subjects are focusing only on the lower lower level skill yeah. except the you told the mini project and the final year project even though we are promising all the uh, bloom's taxonomy has to be explored by our uh, teaching learning process we have only two option mini project and the final year project is there any other option as like you told you can include the surveys uh, for measuring the performance and the converting that uh, to your program outcomes yeah. is there any st standard structure available to convert uh, all other tasks except the uh, our syllabus because our syllabus we focus only on that uh, assessment that focus on only on the lower level skill yeah correct the syllabus we are focusing on lower skill only higher order can be tested only by the uh, projects or as well as open book test open book test now act is trying to implement it out open book assessment method because now what happened is uh, due to e learning process due to corona effect uh, they are uh, coming out a scheme of open book evaluation process also they are doing it so there are different methodologies for testing the students level in higher order level actually so standardly we are following it new yes, methods sir. are getting evolved and will be implemented in future uh, days to come okay sir. and uh, course uh, course outcome suppose uh, if you want to test a student in particular uh, area means the, the act is giving an option that nba program specific outcome is one topic is there uh, your department will be having program specific outcome so there the flexibility is there you can set your own course you can uh, train your students and you can analyze in that point of view so that is the option is given there because Uh, most of the syllabus is set by the university only you, the engineering colleges don't have the freedom so for that purpose only what happens is they have a program specific outcome on one term they are given three two, two or three program specific outcome you can do it you can uh, add your own uh, subjects or labs or additional activities and train the students i can evaluate it in that higher order level so that using that program specific outcome you can do it that we can specify our course outcome we define yes, yes. our you can specify whatever the course you want additionally you can add it and train your student the program specific outcome is nothing but what is the uniqueness of your student suppose a student is coming from a particular university if he is coming from iit madras iit delhi iit kanpur means what will be the uniqueness of iit students you know right they are able to capable of now to analyze the research practical related problems they can analyze it. they will be very strong in their concept wise that is the uniqueness of a student like that you can train your students your uniqueness that is based on pso that option the university the acd is giving mba is giving you psos you can set psos for attaining that pso you can set your own course or lab or any methodology or curriculum you can have it and that flexibility you can do it and you can test your students level hot level it test that i can include in that uh, yes yes system. surely certainly yeah in the psos you can include it and you can have your own uh, Uh, laboratories training methodology or uh, even we have nptel courses are there right yes you can guide the students ask them to attend it evaluate it and add it out see the attainment level is reached or not okay sir thank you so good morning sir yes good morning so this is yuvraj from kumar swami college of engineering sir yes sir tell me sir sir can you give some clarity about the curricular gap analysis sir yeah curriculum gap analysis what happen is uh, now i am in tier 1 previously i was working in tier 2 institutions uh, tier 2 uh, institutions what happen is the units the syllabus is set curriculum is set by the universities so okay sir uh, engineering colleges or institutions cannot do anything else so based we you, each an in, institution will have their own vision mission and uh, pos right your department will be having your own pos program education objective and pos also will be there which cannot be met by the the syllabus which is set by the university right 
each each college will uh, will be having their own vision mission and pos right so what we have to do is we have to see the gap uh, what are the subjects are not available in the curriculum subjects so those gap can be identified and you can have it we can come out with the own uh, course designing say example modern tool usages on on curriculum is there and uh, in the university syllabus the, that part will be left out if you map the subject you can you can see in the po can be mapped the cos and pos can be mapped and in the final the po mapping you can see which is lagging again example po 0 po 5 will be lagging again so that po 05 what happens is it is a curriculum uh, modern tool usage this will be very poor in the curriculum set by the university so what do you do is you can add some additional value added courses example uh, two three lab hours can be added hiring by external participant from industries and train the students in uh, using proe cft level we are very poor cft programming and training level or uh, uh, training the students in proe level or training the students in uh, ansys level is very poor so you can add some extra courses to that and that what we call it as a curriculum gap and for identifying that you have to map co and pos finally see which po is having more amount of weightage is there you you can map it and check it out uh, whichever the po is having lower value that gives a curriculum gap then for fulfilling that had some additional value added courses in your curriculum or in the time table and show the proof that is what the curriculum gap is is it clear can able to understand what yes, i said yes sir yes sir the you had to start from the co and po mapping you need to have mapped high level low level medium level finally you will take average of the all 12 pos from yes, that you find out where is the uh, lagging begin you are lagging begin any other question hello so a future any questions there also you can get my mail id you can communicate to me i am ready to help you regarding nbr as well as uh, assessment process anybody is in future you have any doubt anything else any time you can mail me also i'm ready to help you so you can get the get my mail id from the uh, convenient coordinator code kaliyappan can we wind it out i think no questions are there from the participants sudan sir Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Okay. On behalf of Philemon Institute Technology, I extend a really hearty vote of thanks to our chief guest, Dr. T. Lakshmanan, who spared time from his busiest schedule to grace the occasion. Today, we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts, and this will surely helpful to all the participants in their future events. your thoughts have enlightened our minds and have shown us a new path thanks for sharing your opinions today sir thank you i will also thank the convener for providing opportunity to share my knowledge so i hope at least i will touch your feelings and so that it will you go and implement in your college level so the knowledge has to get sharing that is what we will grow Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rajan, sir. Thank you, thank you Kaliyapan. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I also learned, thank and you. you also learned, and you gave me an opportunity to learn. That is what. It is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is a mutual uh, uh, learning process, actually. Yeah. Uh, Can we leave? Can I leave? No. Ah, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.